God be blessed and all of his people and everybody said amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us. Another very, very exciting, another very, very challenging lesson on, the, on today. Last time we came together, we talked about a godly example, heroic example, bravery, and none other than Hezekiah. Amen. And look, most of the time, our, 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 our quarter is all about bravery, being courageous, and having fortitude. And quite often the Lord gives us beautiful examples of, of bravery and fortitude, heroism, amen. And most of the time we look at uh, images like we had last time, Hezekiah. But today God is saying, hey, I got some women Amen. Amen. That are very, very brave, very, very heroic, do heroic deeds. And that woman we're going to be looking at today is none other than Esther. Amen. And she is one of the two women that have a book in the Bible with their name on it. Amen. Take my hat off to all you women. Amen. And even if everybody else forget about the women, guess what? God never forget about the women. Beautiful. Esther as well as Ruth. We're going to be looking at Esther today, uh, chapter 4, starting with verse 6 through chapter 5, verse 2. Uh, and we'll be looking at a few other scriptures in the book of Esther because we definitely want to take a look at that. One of the only books, one of two books with a woman's name. And then the second most uh, unique thing about the book of Esther is the word God, nor any form of Yahweh, Adonai, none of God's names, Jehovah, Jehovah Nisha, Jehovah Jireh, none of those names are in the entire book of Esther. Does that mean God is not in the book? <laughs> it doesn't mean that. But we're going to look at that. But before we do, let us look to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll come back and get started on very, very exciting, very, very challenging less than another day. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. You are good, and your mercy endureth forever. We praise you for the life of Esther. Lord, she's a wonderful example. She came from obscurity all the way to the queen, amen, set beautiful examples of courage and bravery for us and help us to look at her and learn and glean from her life that may help us in our everyday Christian living. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we are here. Now, what is our lesson tech title we have today? Esther goes before the king. She's an unlikely person. She was an orphan. Her parents got killed, mother and father, and she was raised by her cousin, Mordecai. Amen? And being an orphan, an orphan uh, no parents, being raised by a relative, she came from that environment and made the queen of all of Persia. Amen. God set her in that position. Vashai was the queen, but Vashai tried to put in women's liberation before it was time. Amen. She wouldn't do what the king told her to do. Amen. And so she wouldn't parade around in front of all of the king's friends. And the king got upset about it, and all of his advisors said, okay, if you let Vashai get away with this, all the women and all the prophets, none of them will listen to their husband anymore. We got a suggestion. Why don't we 
put Bashai out, and we'll go through all your provinces, get all the beautiful young ladies, and bring them in, and let you take a look at them, and you pick the one that you like the most. Guess what? A Hebrew orphan, God put her there. Her attractiveness and everything about her, and plus she was a Hebrew, amen? God strategically put her so that he would use her as an agent to deliver his people on down the road, amen? God is way ahead of us, amen? Amen. Now, here we are here in chapter uh, 4. Let's look at verse, verse 6. So, Hattach went forth to Mordecai. Now, now, how do we get in this position? Amen. Here's Mordecai here. He, he, he's he's uh, being approached by Hattach, who's one of the, one of the uh, uh, king's servants that has been assigned to, to Esther. And he's making an appeal to Mordecai. Mordecai is in mourning. Why is he in mourning? Let's, let's, let's back up a few, a, a few verses here. If we look at Haman, Haman is the villain. And, and this story, I, I want to invite you to, to, to read the whole, the whole thing, hopefully in one setting. This is a magnificent story, beautiful setting. We got the good guys and the bad guys. Haman is one of the bad guys. Hello, Mordecai and Esther, they are the good ones. They want to save God's people. Haman wants to destroy all of, all of the, not one of them, not Haman who, who, who uh, Mordecai, who he didn't like. He, he's not satisfied just to, just to get rid of uh, Mordecai. He wanted to get rid of the whole Jewish race, everybody, everybody. Kill them all. Genocide. That's what he was about. And look at, and look at Haman. They call him Haman the Agite. And, 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 if you, and if you back up just a little bit, we find King Agag, who was an Agite, under the rule of King Saul. Amen? And God told him, destroy all of the Amalekites. King Agag was the king of the Amalekites. Did King Agag do that? No, he did not do it. And if he would have destroyed the, the Amalekites like God told him to, uh, they probably wouldn't be having this problem in the palace right now. Amen? But he refused to do it. He didn't do it. God had to dispose of Saul as the king. Amen? And being an uh, Amalekite, uh, Agag, they were enemies of the Jewish people of God. So Haman just takes it upon himself to, because they, they fought with one another from generation to generation. Moses even prophesied that. And because of that, Haman just takes it on himself because he doesn't like Mordecai. He just decides, hey, I'm, I'm going to wipe them all out. Kill them all. Come on, get rid of every one of them. Amen? Amen? Under, under the stirring of his wife, Zeres, she encouraged him to do that, get rid of the whole Jewish way. So now a decree has been uh, implemented by the king. He's given Haman his signet ring, and Haman has made all the necessary arrangements to have the documents grown up written, thrown into every province, and everybody is mourning now because all the Jews on a certain date are going to be killed. Anybody who killed them, they could confiscate their property and their land. So they were as good as gone. That's why it, 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 it makes a good story because you have the good, then you have the bad, then you got a love relationship between the king and Esther. And then, in the very end, when it looked like it's all over, God miraculously delivers his people. Very, very, very exciting story. We're not going to be able to cover the whole narrative, but 
Uh, I wanted you to get a glimpse of that. Ten chapters, ten chapters. Ten chapters, I know you can read that. I know you can read it in one setting. Beautiful, beautiful movie or a beautiful novel. And it's here and it's recorded in the Bible. Now, hey, chat, he's approached, he's approached Mordecai. Mordecai is mourning because of the decree that has went out that all the Jews should be killed here. And we find him in Birch Street. He's in the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. Now, he couldn't go any further than the king's gate because if you were in mourning, that, that's as far as you could go. Now, he was probably trying to get Esther's attention. Amen. Esther sent him a change of clothes so he could probably uh, come in the palace and talk. He, yet he refused those. Amen. So here we are. And Mordecai told him, Atet, all that had happened and of the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay the king treasury for the Jews to destroy them. Now, take a look at Haman. Haman was filthy rich. He was not dominated by money. He was dominated by authority and power and, and being in charge. He was hung up on titles and positions. And the only thing that hated, he hated more than the Jews was the fact that Mordecai refused to bow down to him and pay him honor and or homage. Amen. Now, it's questionable whether it was an act of worship or if it was just an act of honor and respect. But the only thing that the Bible tells us is number one, Mordecai refused to bow down and that Mordecai was a Jew. Hello? That's all it tells us. Amen. Amen. So here we are here now. He's hung up, and it tells a little bit about him. He gave 10,000 uh, talents of silver to have all the Jews. He paid that to the Persian Empire. Do you know what 10,000 talents of silver? That was two-thirds of the entire income that the Persian Empire collected. Two-thirds of it. So another 5,000 talents, he would have gave them their whole profit for a year. Now, does it sound like he needed any money? He didn't need any money. And sometimes you have to be careful about people that's got lots of money because sometimes they're hung up on power and titles and position and authority. And the king gave him his signet ring. And that was his authority when he had all of these decrees wrote up, amen, to have the Jews destroyed. So now we look at a little bit about Haman and, and, and him, himself. And then verse 8 gives us some details about Mordecai. Also, he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them. Now, uh, Mordecai wouldn't have had access to all of this information if he were not uh, in a high position at the uh, Persian government. Amen? Now, now, how did he get there? Remember King Nebuchadnezzar? He came in and conquered the ten, uh, excuse me, the southern kingdom, took all the best of the young men, young women, and took them where? Took them to uh, Babylon. And there, later on, years and years later, after uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was dead and gone, the Persian Empire took over. Now, a lot of these Jews were there when they had the opportunity to go back. They didn't go back. And look at the positions that God put some in. Now, I, I wanted you to see that because it started off a bad situation. King Nebuchadnezzar came in and just, what, devastated Jerusalem. That was a sad occasion. Amen. Very, very sad. But God can take a sad situation and look down the road just a little way, and God has turned the situation around and made a bad situation turn out for a lot of people. Amen. And just so happened 
Just so happened Mordecai was one of them. Can I tell you, when things look bleak and don't look good and look like your back is pressed against the wall, hold on. Hello. God isn't done working yet. Amen. He's not done working yet. Amen. So here it is. His prominent position was also given to him by God. And look what it says. It says, Shushan to destroy them, uh, to show it to Esther. In other words, explain everything to her that has went on and to declare unto her and to charge her. Uh-oh. Now he gives her uh, uh, opportunity to do something about it. But the only thing wrong with that, she had to risk her life in order to do it. <laughs> Look what he said. And to charge her, to ask her, command her, that she should go into the king to make supplication or a plea to him and to make requests before him for the people. Now, everybody say persuasion. Now, the king had been persuaded by Haman to let this decree go through that all the Jews would be killed. Amen? So now, Mordecai's idea was to have his cousin, who was Esther, to make an appeal to the king to persuade him Hello? To persuade him to do something about the decree that Haman had already put into motion. Amen. Amen. Now, now, it's one thing when somebody asks you to do something or even command you, but when it involves your risking your life, hello, <laughs> that can be challenging uh, for anybody. Anybody. So now she's being challenged here because he's asking her to try to help persuade the king because what? She was the queen now. She was the queen. Amen. So now, now we looked at Haman a little bit. We looked at Mordecai. He's got a beautiful position here. He's uh, on the inside of the palace here. He sees what's going on. He probably wouldn't have known that Haman persuaded the king unless he was where? In the palace itself. Amen. He knew the decree was out, but he knew what was behind the decree, who was Haman. Amen. So now, and Hatak, Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Now she's aware that if, if she does what Mordecai says, she could get killed. Hello? This takes courage and fortitude. And guess what? The woman had it. She's not a man, but she had courage. She had fortitude. She had to be egged on a little bit, but she stood up to the task. Let's watch her work right here. So here she is. She sends back again Esther speaks unto Hatak and gave him command unto Mordecai. In other words, this is the message she sent back to Mordecai. Okay, all the king's servants and the people of the king's prophets said, they do know that whoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king, into the inner court, and if you are not called, there is one law. Hello. And that one law is to be put to death. Hello. And you may get put to death right there on the spot. You might not get ushered outside, uh, outside of the court and get killed out there. You might get killed right there. Hello. Hello. And he says, the only way you can get by this law is that except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. And look, to make bad matters worse, she said, not only do I have to put my life on the line, I'm the king's wife, and he hasn't even called me in the last 30 days. Hello? 
She, she didn't, she was the king's wife. Hello, don't, 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 don't forget that. But she didn't know at that point if she still had favor or not. She said, now, Mordecai, you asking me to get myself killed. Hello. And on top of that, I, I, I haven't even been in with the king for over 30 days now. So in her eyes, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, 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 but let's move on. She just made a bad situation worse and told him about the 30 days that she hadn't even seen the king, which, which gives you questions as to whether she still had clout whether she still had favor with the king or not. And look at the next verse. And they told Mordecai Esther's words. Now, if you look at his response in the next verse, he didn't even pay a bit of attention to what she said. Amen. Why didn't he pay attention to what he said? You got to remember one thing. You got to remember one thing. Mordecai was an official in the temple too. And he knew the rules just like she did. Amen. She decided to tell him just to re-emphasize it. Hello, but Mordecai knew what the rules were. And Mordecai's position, from what he said, seems to say, look, you're going to die anyway. Hello. You, you can either go to the king and make an appeal, but make no mistake about it. Don't ever think, just cause you in the palace, you're going to escape because guess what? You're going to die too. Hello. So you can die either one or two ways. You can die trying to help the situation or you can die because they're going to catch up with the fact that you are a Jew and even though you are in the palace, you're still going to die. Hello. Hello. Now look how he says it. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house or in the, just, just because you're in the palace. He says, because uh, you're going to lose your life just like the rest of us. Hello. That's what that word means. More than all the Jews. In other words, you're going to die just like we are. Now, 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 was, was, was that a good situation to be in? That wasn't a good situation to be in. Hello. Nobody wants to lose their life. And nobody wants to be put in a situation. And I want you to see that and look at it. Look at it. And, and then he says, he says, he said that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than anybody else. Now, what she had did initially with Mordecai's advice, he says now, Esther, you know, when you go to be the king, don't tell them that you are a Jew. Amen. They, they didn't know her identity. They didn't know that she was a Jewish. But they did now. Hello, if we look at verse four, chapter 4, verse 6, so Hatak went forth to Mordecai. Now, Mordecai tells him everything here. So now he's a servant. He's aware that Esther is a Jew. So she's not going to get away. And probably some of the other officials knew about it as well. Now, 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 if we move into verse 14, it starts with what word? F-O-R. F-O-R. F -O -R. Four always does one thing. It tells the reason why. Okay. Everything that transpired, you're going to die just like the rest of us. So you might as well what? Prepare yourself and get ready to go and what? Talk to the king and at least put forth an effort because what? Just as sure as all of us going to die, guess what? You're going to die as well. So this gives the reason why. Look what it says. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, sin, uh, then shall there enlargement. Now, enlargement is relief. Okay. If you hold your peace, guess what? Relief is going to come, and deliverance is going to come, but it will arise to the Jews from where? Somewhere else. Now, take a look at this right here. God's name is not mentioned 
in all of the book of Esther. But did Mordecai have faith in God? <laughs> he had faith in God. He said, God's going to deliver us. I know he is. God is going to deliver us. But guess what? Guess what? If you don't stand up right now and speak your peace, deliverance, God's going to deliver us, but he's going to use somebody else to deliver us. Now, who he had in mind, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who he had in mind. And he probably didn't know. But can I tell you one thing? Hello? Higher are God's ways and God's thoughts than our ways and our thoughts. And when you can't see a way, guess what? God still has a way to deliver you from your circumstances and your situation. And no matter what, no matter what they are. Amen. God can turn your situation around anytime he gets ready. Amen. Now, now, if God's name is not mentioned in this, we still see faith of Mordecai. Am I right about it? We still see his faith. So now, it moves on here in the other part of the verse. It says here, he says, he says here, Deliverance will arise from another place, but thou, that word thou mean you, and your father's house shall be what? Shall be destroyed. In other words, stand up, be brave, be courageous, hello, and go before the king. God is going to use you as an agent to deliver Look what, look what he says now. Look what he says now. He says, he says, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Hello, hello. You know what that means? You know what that means? God orchestrated and raised her to the level and the position that she was in just in order for such a time as this. God was going to use her as an agent to deliver the Jewish people. Amen. And, and look, you and I, we already know the answer. We know what happened. Amen. Did they get delivered? They got delivered. Amen. But look at the encouragement that she got from her cousin. And sometimes God has to use other people, other people to encourage us, to help us uh, step up to the plate and take the assignment that he's assigned for us. Am I right about it? And he was one of the ones that uh, God used to fortify, strengthen her, and to encourage her to do what she did. Amen. Then we see, we see right here in the next verse, uh, her attitude changes. It says here, then Esther bade them return to Mordecai with this answer. Now, in the next verse, we're going to see what they call the similitudes or similarities to Christ. Uh, in this next verse, some of the things, because they compare Esther to Christ to a certain extent. They don't compare them. They just call it similarities. Amen. One, as Christ, what? Died for his people. Esther, what? Put her life on the line for her people. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about things like that. I'm not trying to say she died for the, the sins that she didn't know. No, I'm not saying that. But those are similarities that they draw uh, between Esther and Christ himself. So it says, it goes on in verse 16 here. He says, he says, gather together all the Jews that are in the presence of Shushan and do what? Fast. Now, what is fasting all about? Fasting is to seek God through uh, favor and intervention to get him to bring relief in a dire situation, in a crisis, or at a critical time. 
And this was a, a critical time. So they fasted with that in mind. What is one thing that goes with fasting? Hello. Prayer. Second thing on the It doesn't mention the word prayer here. Doesn't mention God here. But we see God's handy writing on the wall. Am I right about it? Faith. Amen. And not only faith, but we see prayer and fasting to get God's favor when they're in dire need. Now, the thing that we want to do here is take and take it a little bit further. And look what she said. Not only do I want you to fast, he said, neither eat or drink, what? Three days and nights. Always remember three. God was in the earth, in the tomb for what? Three days. Amen. And now she's calling what? A fast for three days. That's listed among the similarities uh, that we talked about. Three days and three nights. He said, I and my what? Mage will fast what? Likewise. Amen. And so will I go in unto the king. Now, that, that Mordecai's urging seemed to have an effect on her. Even though now she knows her life is at risk, uh, she stands up, steps up to the plate. Now, the thought that I want here, right here, I told you that God's name is not mentioned in this book. Am I right about it? But it does not mean that God is not working what? Behind the scene. Hello. Hello. Talk to me if you can. Doesn't mean God. No. Sometime in life, you will have life-threatening situation, and it may look as if God is nowhere around, nowhere to be seen, no, nowhere present. But you know what? It's in those times that God wants us to stand up and show that we're strong. Show that we're courageous. Show that we're willing, hello, to step out on faith and trust him for the results. Talk to me if you can. Hello? Hello? And I'm not trying to say that the Lord is going to put you in a life and death situation. But I will tell you, there will be time when you look around and it look like God is not there. And he's not hearing your cry. Those are the times you need to step up. Step up and be a man and woman of courage. If you have to do a heroic act, or if you have to just step up to the plate, plate and take your stand. Hello. Do it and trust God for the results. Amen. That's what you call God pushing you out of your comfort zone. Hello. And if you're going to make it as a bona fide servant for the Lord, somewhere along the line, you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. Hello. That separates the men from the boys and the women from the ladies. That's why, we, that's, why we, that's why we celebrate Esther right now because she did what? She stepped up to the plate. Heroic deed, willing to die for her people. Amen. And it's got it in black and white. Don't take my word for it. It says here, it says here, which is not according to the law. She said, I will go to the king, which is not according to the law. It's against the law. I'm, 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 I'm asking to get myself killed. Hello. But that's not all of what she says in the latter part of verse 16. She says about four words here. And they are recorded and you hear them in church settings all the time. The famous words of Esther. Look what she said. She said it right here. And if I perish, hello, I perish. There was only a few words, but them were some strong words. Do you have the courage to stand up, to, to, the, to the, step up to the plate in life-threatening 
situation. We got a woman that we can look at now to draw courage and stuff from her. Amen? Esther, hello. Even though it was a life-threatening situation, she stepped up to the plate. Stepped up to the plate, willing to put her life on the line. Not for other, but not only for herself, but her, what? Her other, other people as well. Esther goes before the king. Amen. And look at it right here. It says, uh, Mordecai says in verse 17, so Mordecai went his way and did it all that Esther had commanded him to do. Look at the way the, the tides have turned. Mordecai raised Esther. Raised her. He was much older than she was. He raised her. He was used to telling her what to do. But now that he's got her to see it his way or God's way, now he began to do what she told him to do. Can God reverse the roles? He can reverse the roles. Amen. But he only reverses the roles when you step up to the plate and exemplify heroic deeds. He ought to be commended for her heroic willingness to die for her fellow Jews. Amen. Look at verse, look at verse 15. But uh, excuse me, chapter 5, verse 1. But before, before we go there, uh, let's go to verse 5, chapter 1. Now, it came to pass on the what? Third day. Amen. Have we heard that three before? On the third day, Jesus had been in the earth, but on early Sunday morning, what? Stepped out of death and stepped into what? Immortality, eternal life. Those are under the similarities between Esther and Christ himself. Three days. So now it came to pass the third day that Esther put on her what? Royal apparel. Now when Jesus stepped out of the earth in three days, he had on his royal. And he went to the throne of God. She went to the throne of a physical king. Jesus went to the throne of God, king of kings and lord of lords. That's just one of the similarities that we talked about. He said, and Esther put on a royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon the royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. Now, it, it, it says all of these over against the house, over against the wall. And what it really means is that when the only way that Esther could get in there, it was impossible for her to get in there without the king seeing her. Amen. That, that's what it said. In other words, he was sitting right in front of the entrance. That's what it means when it says there, he said, over against the gate of his house, she could not get in there without being unnoticed. Amen. Or without being noticed is what I meant to say here. But here she is, verse 2. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that he did what? She obtained favor in his sight. And whose favor did she already have? She had God's favor. That's what she had. Amen. Don't ever think it was all about Esther because it was really all about who? All about God. He was the true deliverer even though Esther and Mordecai took credit, amen, for it. And look, God is willing to do the same thing for you and I, amen. He'll deliver us from circumstances and situations, and he wants to make us heroes of righteousness, heroes of good, amen. He wants to make us uh, encouragement to other folks that can look at our lives and be what? encouraged by the life that we live. Now, if you live in an opposite life, nobody going to look at your life and be encouraged in a godly way. Hello? You choose to do that. If you used to choose relationship to relationship, bar hopping and whore mongering and all of those other things that you can do with your life, you're not going to excite anybody and encourage anybody in a, in a, uh, in a spiritual way, forget it. It's not going to happen. Amen. You might encourage them to do mischief, but you're not going to encourage them to do good. Hello. 
Hello, talk to me if you can. Some of the worst and the notorious people out there have been encouraged by others and they were doing the same thing they saw them do. But they saw them do what? The wrong thing instead of the right thing. Amen. Okay, we're almost out of here. Okay. And she obtained favor from the king, but she also obtained favor from another king. Amen. That even though his name is not mentioned in the book, God was the one that ultimately gave her favor. Amen. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And when God makes a hero out of you, make sure you don't try to take the credit and you give God the glory. Amen. But you wouldn't have made it if it wouldn't have been for him. Talk to me. And last part here. Okay. And the king held out Esther, held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in her hand. So Esther what? Drew near and took the shop of the, uh, of the scepter. That was acceptance here. Now, 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 we know the story. What happened to Haman? He was killed on the same gallows that he what? Had built for Mordecai. Amen. Same one. When you try to dig ditches for other folk, be careful that you don't get thrown in the ditch yourself. Amen. And the thing out of it is here, if Esther could trust God with her life, life-threatening situation, can you and I trust God with our circumstances and our situation? We certainly can. We certainly can. Our life is not on the line sometimes when we need to trust God. We might just be sick, got the flu, whatever, going through a bad situation. But learn how to what? Trust God. Learn how to trust him. She trusted him, and we may never get to a point where we have to trust God to to deliver us from a life-threatening standpoint of view as well as what? a whole nation of other people as well. We may not never get to that, but we do have circumstances and situations that God can deliver us from, and he will deliver if we only do what? If we only learn how to have faith in him, trust in him, amen, and be a hero full of courage and fortitude just like Hezekiah, uh, just like Hezekiah and Esther was. Now, we know what happened. What happened? God came in right on the end. Esther got, excuse me, I, I said that she got Haman killed or hanged on the gallows. Then they wrote another decree. Who got, who got the king's signet ring this time? Haman did. First, excuse me, Haman got it the first time. Now Mordecai has it. He writes a different decree that the Jews are able to do what? Fight back on that day when they were supposed to be floated. Anybody try to kill them and confiscate their property, their land, their cattle, their horses, their cows, they could fight back. Amen. And that's how they got delivered. Now, look at this story right here. This woman from obscurity to the queen. From the queen, love relationship with the king. Hello? And then what? The miraculous happened. God comes in and delivers his people. Isn't that a beautiful story? Beautiful. One of the most beautiful stories in all of the Bible. Amen. And I had a chance to tell you about it. God bless you. Love you. Let us look to the Lord. We're out of here. Don't forget the beautiful example of uh, uh, Esther on the, for today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We thank you for the courage and the bravery and the heroic deeds of Esther, and we pray that will encourage us and fortify us when we get in life-threatening situations or dire situations. We praise you for her life in the name of Jesus. Amen.